Hi, everybody. Aaron Fisher here. Welcome to Afternoon Astonishment on Conjure Community. I am joined today by Alexander Slimmer, Steve Barcelona, and Adam Grace is on assignment. So today we're going to be talking about the awesome, old school, funny, and sometimes naughty magic of our dear old friend, we miss him, Billy McComb. So as we get going, all we ask in response, all we ask in return, all we would ever beg of you, plead of you, or suggest is that you hit that fantabulous follow button or the, the sensational subscribe button so you can be notified every time we decide to share awesome magic with you, which is pretty regular. So Alex, Steve, how are you? You guys Macomb fans? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Sure. Huge. Yeah. Billy I remember, uh, no, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Just saying he's one of the best. One yeah. of the best. Yeah, I just, I, I have very fond memories of Billy and, uh, he was kind to me as a young man learning magic and uh you know it's he's he's one of the greats of all time there's no doubt you, we talked about uh jay marshall some and, mm -hmm. and i lectured in chicago jay marshall gave me maybe the i mean he really was very funny if you were listening to it but you know it was the worst introduction i've ever had in my life he was like <laughs> I first saw this young man do an afternoon doing doing a afternoon astonishment do a late night show at the world magic seminar and i have to tell you that didn't turn out very well let's hope <laughs> today goes better give it up <laughs> so that was jay marshall i could totally hear him doing that and it was totally true but you know billy <laughs> sweet and kind you know what i mean i remember billy was always there at the castle always eager to help, always very supportive. So I just can't wait to see him again. And I'm so curious to see what Alex has picked for us to watch first. Well, it's good stuff. It's definitely good stuff. But before we get into it, uh, remember a while back, we had some episodes that we did with magicians sort of from another era, like bar magicians, that maybe had oh, some yeah. humor that poked people in the wrong way. There's potential for this. Billy is very lighthearted about all the stuff he does. But some of the jokes seem a little bit dated, so you might see some things that you go, ooh, that wouldn't work today. So, you know, be aware. Don't judge too harshly, but, you know, you, you'll see those moments for sure. He's one of these fellows. Uh, I don't I think we've had one or two of them who are similar. He used to perform in what they call working man's clubs in England. Uh, and that's where a whole sort of school of entertainment was founded. Uh, that you can ask our English friends about, they'll tell you. And so, you know, a lot of naughty humor, but we've had some folks do some that humor that was naughty that, you know, it's all in the intention really, uh, as far as if you ask me. And we'll be very curious to see if when we watch Billy, even though he says things that you can't say now and you wouldn't say now, we'll, we'll take little votes and see if, if it's coming across as creepy. We'll know. We'll find out. It'll be exciting. We'll, we'll see. Some of these classics play better than others over the, over the span of time. All of it plays well. There's just some things you go, ooh, he just said that. <laughs> You'll be fine. Right. right. All right. So if you're, if you're, you know, trigger warning. That should be <laughs> That's plenty of warning. Yeah. It's but let's get into it. This first one is awesome. You're going to love this. It's really a great bit. And a great way to open the show. Oh, there's that dove again. There's that dove. It was there. It was there. It was there. There we oh. go. Oh. That's some high powered graphics right there. Yeah. Like I'm an the animal. <laughs> For the time, that was a spaceship yeah. on the screen. Right. I know all this nonsense. This act will not last too long. I have a wonderful there he is. During that it, it goes fast. I drink 14 cups of tea before I start. And by God, that speed is longer you wouldn't believe. Um, the first trick will scare the, sh the daylights out of you. <laughs> um, we bring the lights down. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> God, you wouldn't believe it. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. This, to me, is like going to work in the middle of the night. <laughs> Said wear evening dress. Damn lucky I didn't turn up in my pajamas. Right. Watch, watch the fantastic knot. There's the knot like that. We hold it up like that and watch that. And it goes, way. Oh, my God. It's impressive. <laughs> oh. Please. No, no, no. Save it for the end. I have a hell of a week finished. Right. Now. Hey, press pause. If there's anything we can do to get the volume up a little bit, let's do it. Thank you. We produced a small beast. 
Mm. I will alert the beast that very shortly he's coming out. Wake up, you little bird. Wake up. That's right. Come on, wake up. Oh, God, he's done it again. Holy <laughs> day. Beast. That's the back Mom's of them. Right? You've got to teach them to fly upside down, otherwise you have a row. Because the maid's terrible. I said to the maid only this morning, I said, if you don't make this bed properly, you and I are going to fall out. But anyhow. Hey <laughs> <laughs> why your bed is in the top this morning. Drum roll in K. <laughs> God, the cooperation. Here we go. <laughs> uh, come on out now. You come out. You, you perch. <laughs> perch on it because they're expecting a crocodile or something. Now you perch and they did. Not the feathers, you silly fool. You're supposed to go. Right. Here we go. Ta ra. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. I'm, I'm really glad you liked that. I might do that again some other time. Because I think it's, I haven't really way to just, way to just <laughs> gag the, the rubber dove. Times like this, I wish Ethan was uh, back on screen because I would just give anything out of all of us. I know what our reaction is, right? We're like, that's marvelous, right? And of course, his saucy line, I found to be charming. Right? Yeah. I mean, totally charming. I even think you could get away with that joke uh, if you were him today. Uh, if you were him for sure. Yeah, because, you know, we'd fall out of it. I think everyone, it just feels very much like a joke. But, you know, never underestimate what you can be called out for or what you can discover as a man about what you don't know. Uh, but I would love, just love one of these days to be able to get, you know, just to get that response. You know, it's marvelous. Ethan says he's going to tell us during the after show. So I'll ask you, Steve. Did you just love that bit? Didn't you almost wish you had it in your show? I mean, it's just what you see there is just a great performer walking out for a fantastic opening that's going to set the tone for everything he does after that. You know, it's clever. It's funny. There's a lot of things happening. You know, it's it's got some mad, some visual magic in it to let you know like something's going to go on. But it's just like the key to entertaining right there. You can tell that Billy McComb has walked out in front of a lot of crowds. You know, you got to come out head up. You got to be able to do some strong stuff that gets everyone on your side immediately. And by the time he gets to that part there, you know, you got him set up now, right? You go to your first thing. You got him set up now. Well, you know, he did, beautiful. He, he did beautiful. the sculpt thing first. So the first thing he did is he had this incredibly visual thing. Mm -hmm. Then he went into this wonderful piece of business that ended up being a gag. But I have to say... Mm -hmm. The thing that gets me about Billy the most is almost like watching Michael Skinner turn over a card. When you watch Billy McCone walk out in front of people, you we've made jokes about the Perry Como of magic. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's low energy and sleepy, right? Billy McComb is just laid back. I mean, it's hard to imagine a person on stage with more repose. Yeah, but... He's so clever and, and he has such witty little things that he's saying or doing that in some way I feel like gives it energy. Definitely. He's you know a, what I mean? Not the Perry Como of magic, right? He's yeah. it, It's all fully distilled. He's per, But he talks in a way, you know, I know everyone mentioned the volume. He talks in a way that makes you lean forward and listen. Oh. very present. The energy is there. You know what I mean? And he's really inviting the audience in. And it's one thing in those theaters, especially we had this experience just a couple years ago. It's easy to push. It's easy mm. to push. You know, it's a small theater. He's in there. Uh, I've just heard me. I don't know what theater he's in, but the theaters I've seen him in, it's like That's... 150 seat theaters. Oh, he's in Stevens. Oh, that's Stevens magic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen him in the Palace of Mystery so many times. Sure. There, and it's such an intimate place. You can hear a person in the back row. And watching Billy be on stage, you really get a person who's not pushing. When you really get to see what it's like when you just welcome the audience in and, and give them a hug. You know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. a real thing. Uh, he's, playing, he's, he's playing it so low key, right? Because all those jokes are... They're, they're getting as much of a reaction as all the magic that he's doing. So he's sort of like... He's going to get you with one of those, right? And one of the things that's really understated about this, I think because of the video, when that Dove production happens, we can tell it's not a real Dove. I have a friend that opens his show with this effect. He plays it a little bit different, but essentially he's producing the rubber Dove, right? At the moment that the Dove is produced, 
the audience genuinely believes it's a real bird. And then when he starts to fold the thing up, there's like a moment of shock and horror. And then they realize what the, the gag is and they start laughing. So that bit is super, super strong just because of all the beats you get out of, mm -hmm. you know, like just, just that whole, that whole production, you know, it's, it's really wonderful. What I, what I love about it too is I, I think I already said this, it sets the tone. Like mm -hmm. that very much right there. If that's all you ever saw, that is the flavor of Billy McComb right there. That is like what he presents, no matter what it is, you know? When you've seen other people do that bit, and then we, and then I'm, I promise folks, we will move on. But when you've seen other people do that bit, haven't you seen people tend to milk it more in terms of making mm -hmm. the bird move more? I almost feel like the way Billy did it, dispensing that bit where you're really watching the you know because you can make the rubber bird twitch and really delay that moment but i just think the way he folds it up is just funnier you know yeah. I mean, one yeah. of the things you learn from uh one of the things you learn from watching billy or even reading the instructions to the mechanical prediction deck billy understood comedic timing like nobody's business mm -hmm. a lot of people do that bit but the way he did it where he just immediately just folded it up uh, and said, I'll use it for later. I think, I think he knew when to get to the punch. You know what I mean? It's really, yeah. really a I lesson. Let it hang out for too long because they don't believe it's a real bird. You know, there's not, there's not much you can do to prove that it's a real bird other than give it a little jiggle or make the head bob up and down. You know and what? It, it kills it. Yeah. You know what? The biggest mistake you make is getting back to the well too many times. You know, you're going to get a joke. You think maybe if I go and add this little bit, it gets funnier and funnier. And really it doesn't. There's just, you know, Billy was smart enough to just take the joke when it was in front of him, you know? All right. A quick question. Have we managed to clear any Velcro? Looking fine. All right. Wonderful. Let's watch some more Billy. Yeah, let's let's do this next one. This is a classic of magic, Billy McComb style. This is a wonderful, wonderful piece yeah, of magic. And this one's got a lot of magic in it. Yes, sir. For this next stunt, there's only one thing that I don't borrow, and it's this, which happens to be what is technically known in the language as a swizzle stick. This is a swizzle stick. The idea is that when you order champagne, they're drinking water. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Seriously. Now, the swizzle stick. What you do is you take the swizzle stick. I, I steal these from all over the world. This comes from... Uh, Got to get glasses or longer arms. Anyhow, <laughs> this comes from somewhere. And the idea is you swizzle this inside the, the champagne, you see, and then the, all the bubbles come out. And you don't burp at the waiter when you're arguing about the bill. Um, I will give this uh, to you to look after for me. Don't do anything peculiar with it. I realize the possibilities. <laughs> right. Now, I want to borrow three signet rings like this. This is the old family signet ring that goes back to 1600 and frozen to death. It's been in the family ever since it was nearing. And so it won't confuse you. I will take it off. Oh, God. That's it. Right. Now, we want to borrow three rings of this type, gold signet rings, one from here, one from right there, and one from over here. The idea is that as many of you as possible are going to be close with what I'm going to do. Uh, do we have any signet rings? Can I? Oh, one there, one there. Oh, yes. May I, may I have a look at it, my dear? God, look at that. What do you do when the battery goes? <laughs> you two. And, uh, oh, we got one over here. Uh, Blackstone, obviously, in mourning for something or another. Cat died again. Yeah, I know that's yeah, terrible. And uh, who is it? He's one? riffing. Yeah, may I borrow that? Totally. Um, try to get it off. I've had more rings covered in saliva in this trick than you ever <laughs> Sometimes if we can't get it off, we have a hell of a good trick with a finger, a ring, and a Swiss Army knife. But it gets very messy. Right. Um, that one's yours, that one's yours. That one's yours. Right. Now, we're going to put them on the swizzle stick. But before we do that, we're going to really observe them properly because we can't have any junk in this act. Uh, <laughs> Oh, can, can I read the inscription in yours? It's wonderful. It says, to George with love and fondest devotion from Cyril. <laughs> oh, well, it takes all sorts to make a world. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yours is a French, you do look funny. Oh, hell, it's this thing. I figure fun. Um, yours is a French ring. You can see the J.C. Penet. It's a real <laughs> good French ring. Beautiful, that. Right. 
put the point the swizzle stick towards me, not too ferociously because I'm a bit funny there, right now, push it right through the center like that. Fine. Now, here's the amazing thing. Those three rings at this moment in time are separate on the thing like that. Watch this, because this is very bizarre. Do you see your ring there? Stand up and lift it up in the air. Just lift your ring. Don't worry about the others. <laughs> your ring is now linked to the other two, right? Now, come, my child. Come with me. Give it to the gentleman and let him check for his ring. Do you see your ring there? I'll take her back in case she gets cold. <laughs> right, you sit over there, right? And keep quiet for the moment. It's you, there, is it? Yeah. Right? Only one person hasn't identified the I think it's you, isn't it? Right, let me go over to you. It's definitely yours, isn't yeah, it? it is. Oh, thank God for that. Look, <laughs> that there is his ring, which he has identified, see? And is linked right through your ring, see? That is her ring, which she's identified, and is linked right through your ring. There's no way of it coming apart, right? You see that? Where do you come from? This is most important. Brian, Ohio. Ohio. Where do you come from? Hester Park, Colorado. Yeah, and where do you come from? We saw him. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I had my first beer. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, I got to tell you, good people, that <laughs> this first part where you link them together, I mean, that blows the idea of the three of you going home together. But I got to explain, the first part, I, I do very well. You know, they, they join them together. But, but they <laughs> this, is a bit, this is a difficult <laughs> bit, this. Uh, I'll tell you what. I have a mode of separating them. OK, it's mundane, it's ordinary, but it works. And if it works, now, <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry, I'll only cut through the cheapest one. <laughs> Three worried people. Yes, right. I, uh, now this 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 is a this is a, a bit of a. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time that happened again. Don't worry, I can get it off. I know exactly how to get it off. It goes round there, round there, and right. Yeah. <coughs> Seems like a good idea at the time. <laughs> well, we just went and died and keep sewing. Oh, sh oh. <laughs> oh, I got that off, but <laughs> hey, we're back where we were at the start again. Um, who has the swizzle stick? Who's got the swizzle stick? Have I? Oh, yeah, you're right. It was here. I'm going to take this with it. We, we were in luck before we put it in this room. Thank God for you. Otherwise, this wouldn't know where I was. Hold it like that, right? Now, we're going to put the three rings. They're still, unfortunately, linked together, as you can see. We're going to put them on there like that. Right, so. Right. Now, whilst they're in this situation, there's not a chance in hell of getting them apart unless we magish. <laughs> You're not going to give us that kind of... Yes, yes, I'm going to magish. I say the mystic words to myself, because they're very bad words. <laughs> and then I do this. It means nothing. It's like putting parsley on fish, but by God, it does look good. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your ring there, that one? That's the one that's causing all the trouble. <laughs> listen, listen very carefully. You will actually hear one ring mystically waft through the other, <laughs> filled through the center. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds real good, doesn't it? But this means that your ring is separate now. Lift your ring up really high, and you find now it's unlinked, but the other two are still linked together, right? Still linked together, so we've got to get these two apart. Oh, you know, plumbing is much easier than this, and it doesn't matter. <coughs> Look. I do that, just my own amazement. Um, <laughs> pull your ring off separate from the others, and it is separate and it's perfectly intact. The last ring in the swizzle stick goes to the lady over here. A round of applause for three people without whom we wouldn't have had a miracle. Thank you so much, my 
fuller, right? <laughs> Lovely. A couple of finger rings? Work the whole room. Maybe, would, you know, it would be, would give us a one in chat if you've never seen or even heard of the linking finger ring. That's the kind of thing that, you know, everyone knows the Chinese linking rings, right? But when you get into magic, the linking finger rings, that's a whole, that's a whole new thing. That's a whole different kind of trick. Put a one if this is the first time you've ever seen that one out there. Well, that's interesting because, you know, even hanging out with us for a few years, you may not have seen it, right? It is largely considered, it's one of those tricks like the bullet catch, which it is often defined as mental magic. It's often, it's, or let's just say it's a trick because of taste pairings that mentalists often choose to do, right? True. Uh, Steve, have you ever done the finger rings or been a fan? I, I have not messed with the linking finger rings. I think I told on, on one of these episodes a while ago my my terrible experience with an engagement ring. And yeah, so I've yeah. shied away from all ring uh, ring but, type situations. I, I'm just saying, aside from your own, you I, know, have you always loved, loved liked, liked the trick when you've seen it or said, wow, that's a killer or... Yes, I've always <laughs> thought that. I mean, I like, I like his presentation right here. I like the way it... He just worked that whole room with that, mm -hmm. you know? And I like the little touch of the swizzle stick. You know, it's an organic thing that kind of makes sense. And, and it makes it know, seem more hands off too, right? Yeah, it makes it seem more hands off. It's an interesting little bit. Like, uh, I love the fact that he says he goes around the world and steals them. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just a little layer to the whole thing that I like, you know? Mm -hmm. This is another one I would love to get uh, in the, in the in the in the after show. I'm going to want to ask Ethan what his response to is. Alex, have have you gone through? We've talked about some of these tricks, like the egg bag. Some of these tricks are real test. Find out how how, how, how tall you are. Tricks, mm -hmm. and some of them are the tricks that you can gauge how tall you are over a period of decades. When, when Alexander Scott Alexander was talking about the egg bag and how he was hating it for 20 years, while his teacher Denny kept saying, "You're gonna love it, stick with it." And then sometime around year 25, one day it clicked. And we have stories about these with these particular tricks that are challenging on many levels, really more than you would ever know until you got up and performed it and then you'd have to be pretty experienced to even know why it didn't go so great on so many levels what was your take on the linking finger rings growing up i i feel it's definitely one of those like the egg bag like cups and balls right it's one of those big classic pieces of magic that you need you need a basic skill set of performance to be able to even tackle the thing and i you know i i've handled this much like i've handled some of those other routines that were just mentioned in that I've been studying them for years. I think Bruce Servon's routine is wonderful. I think that Roger Klaus's routine is wonderful. I think this is pretty wonderful. I've always loved the routine. Uh, I just sort of shied away from it. And it's really uh, has a lot to do with what Steve said about it. You know, I've just heard a lot of horror stories about borrowed finger rings. And I did a couple of borrowed finger ring tricks. And I just sort of backed away from it just because I don't want someone to accuse me of doing something to the ring that might have been there before. It's an easy opportunity for a spectator to sort of take control over the show if you're not skilled okay. enough. Okay, yeah. so that's like a big part of it right there. There's yeah. no question about the value of a bill. Yeah. Right? There's no question about it. And so, I don't know. I think, I, mm, you know, you that's know I'm just really asking you guys. I, I get why we don't put stuff in our show for a lot of reasons. I'm just asking if you guys can talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the effect. You know, like, I, I've only ever studied it. your own liability, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've only ever studied it and practiced it. I've never had this up on its feet to do in front of anyone. So I have, I really have no insights in that, in that regard. It's just one of these tricks. It's like when Alex says you got to have a certain fundamental comfort on stage, mm -hmm. the trick you know, it's like the egg bag where the, the people who got it and have seen someone do it really well are mystified in a very special way that you seldom see elsewhere, except they get there through a very esoteric effect, which is rather hard to bring off. In this case, you're borrowing three incredibly valued, but very small things. And then you are linking those things whereby it... It's really all of the effect for the vast majority of the audience is coming when you see the other people see that it's happening, right? Unless you have the ubiquitous the closed circuit 
as a major part of your I'm doing close up and using it to call it a stage show sort of modern trend that performer that, that old pros kind of are disgusted with. But aside from that, the trick is meant to be done in a room where you're really playing people seeing going, oh my goodness, yes, that's my ring. Yes, that's my ring. Yes, that's my ring. Did your ring come, come off, you know, and come off? And so it's a really powerful trick, but it is hard to play. And I always am reminded of what Jim Steinmeier, a friend of the club, a uh, previous lecturer and world sort of genius, uh, has was saying to me for years, which is that magicians are very, very love to see if they can do a, a, a magic for a gigantic room with stuff that's no bigger than a postage stamp. And his point was not that you can't have great tricks like that. His point is that as a point of pride, having magic that your audience can't see is not something that we should be really necessarily thrilled about. When we're doing magic on a stage, we want the audience to see it. You know what I mean? And that's always a battle for magicians. This is one of those tricks. And Billy was rife with them because Billy, by the time we met him, was a fine aged everything. The organs were pickled, but he was a fine aged wine. And he could throw a few sponge balls in his pocket, which is ask anyone. This is not a stage trick. Mm -hmm. And he would do those in the same room or he would carry a, a couple cards in his pocket. And he, he said he was doing my bicycle thief, you know, uh, it was blew my mind, but it was five cards. My point is not that I would ever do the bicycle thief on that stage, but Billy knew how to mm -hmm. play everything so well. that if he threw, you know, a sucker egg trick or a couple you know, die tube in his pockets. He had enough to do everything. Steve, you, you tell me if you think I'm wrong, but I think the reason why is because he was a worker. He would get out, he would work, you know, the gentle, you know, when you say the tradesman's club or whatever you called it, working I mean, man's club. Yeah. yeah. Working man's club. I mean, that's kind of like associations and little trade organizations would have events. And that's the kind of thing he's going and blue collar, and blue collar audiences. Yeah. Yeah, blue collar audiences, like people that are like, hey, entertain me, let's go. And he, when when you're doing that, I mean, all our favorite magicians have that on their resume, right? Like Don Allen and, I mean, that's the first well, name that I comes mean, to mind. Look, no one, very seldom does a person learn to perform for the classes before they have any skill in performing for the masses. Absolutely. <laughs> like uh, and, Someone flagged the tape. We got to make that a t-shirt right there. Yeah, I'm just saying like at the end of the day, hardly anyone who is working for a big high tone audience didn't polish their chops working for the public. You know, it's difficult, you know, poor Lady Gaga, right, got paid what she gets paid to perform where she performs. She would sing anywhere for anyone and from to all accounts still will. <laughs> so, so Billy, in answer to your question, Steve, it's hard to imagine a person who worked more. It's hard to imagine a person who did more shows out of their car more often for a oh, longer yeah. period of time. I never met a man who had done more magic than Billy McComb. Now, there was never a time you could ask Max Maven about a magic effect in, in the areas where I would ask him that he wouldn't know. But Billy had this, this seeming sense that he had done at least 100 shows with every possible approach to every possible trick that you could think of. There was one time I was obsessed. I wanted to do a smoking thumb. Smoking thumb is an old trick where you take out a lighter. You can almost picture him doing it I more think than I've me. Seen him do it. You know, you take out, you know, your tools or whatever, and then you strike a match and then you you light your hand, you know, and you draw on your thumb and then his giant billow of smoke came out. And I wanted to do one in California, which they had just, they had legal legalized marijuana for medications. And I was working on my stage show for those same theaters because yeah, I saw Billy in Magic Castle and I wanted to. That'd have been so funny. <laughs> I wanted to do a bit like that, you know? And so I'm Billy and look at all these gimmicks. They look like no good. And he goes, yeah, man, yeah, man, come over here. I'm going to show you what you do. Let me tell you how. Let me give you the chemicals. And he lists these chemicals <laughs> that I need to do to make it. Be careful with that. It's a little unstable. 
you know. <laughs> <laughs> and come to find out, the stuff isn't available commercially. If you buy this from a chemist, uh, your name's going to go on a registry. Uh, <laughs> and if you is touch it magic, great. If you touch it, it'll kill you. <laughs> and don't but, actually in But it'll produce billows of smoke. <laughs> but it will produce billows of smoke, and it's definitely the way to do that trick. You know? So, so Billy knew everything about all of it. Like, like there's not a single trick that Billy hadn't done a lot. And he, just give you one more example. The nap hand deal. Billy did the nap hand deal. Max Maven suggested to me, maybe you want to do the nap hand deal. I said, what on earth is the nap hand deal? That's a trick where you get four spectators on a card table. And this is relating to a, a, an English game of nap, which is something like bridge or whist or something, which to me, I, I don't know. And what they would do is it's a poker deal demonstration with four people and you on stage. It's a staged poker game trick. Right. So Billy has done all of it and he did. And you and you felt like he did all of it enough that when he told you the problems with the method, he didn't just try it once. You know, he tried all the methods a lot. So I just never met a person who'd put in that kind of time with that variety of stand up magic. You know, it's a short answer, long answer to a short question. But my God, there is no there's no other way to convey what Billy really was you know and when you watch him doing these things in some cases you're watching routines which have been polished to perfection in one way in another instance you see in a lot of these cases he has pared down things to their essential elements and he is getting right no fat no fat at all you know i think it's both those things together at the same time i think you're totally right mm -hmm. yeah it's the, even that even the ring routine was pared down it that's the kind of routine because you, it's nebulous for a lot of people what the big moments are because they're all little big moments yeah. it looks like a lot of fumbling and it's very long one of the reasons billy's was so lovely is because whether you know it or not at seven minutes it's about as brisk as that routine could be mm -hmm. you know and 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 it's a short one you know you see most people do that trick it's going to be 12 or 13 and you're going to feel every one of them and know. notice another thing about billy's routine that a lot of the other routines don't have a lot of the other routines they play it serious and straight to the bone the whole way right at the end of his there's a big gag he's got a saw and he's cutting those rings apart then they link and you get another effect well then the ring goes like, on the saw yeah right but that, they but, link on there but that's but it's a, another effect to elevate the whole thing to yeah. another another piece right i was going to gonna mention that yeah that, and, that and by some rules that breaks a rule doesn't it guys mm -hmm. there, there's this is an example of Billy McComb knowing from experience that if he breaks this rule in this case, it's going to not hurt the trick, but make it better. And he only knew that by finding out and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and doing it a hundred times the other way before he went, you know what this trick needs. <laughs> right. And then finding out over a hundred times that it did get better. You know what I mean? Because one yep. of the things we always tell people is if you try a joke or a piece or a bit or a moment and it doesn't work, I don't know about you, but it takes me several performances of an idea to even do it right enough to find out whether I, it, the other plays. Right. Yeah, totally. I've got one or two jokes in my act that on, that only get a laugh like fifty percent of the time, but I just keep like keep them in there because I like it, and I'm going to tweak it until it gets it every time. It's interesting. Well, let's check out this next uh, this next clip to wrap up today. This is another big show piece. It's a quick one, but you guys are going to love this. This is a great. A great twist on on a popular theme that we all uh, know and love. And let me just say, Alex, congrats on your picks here. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a story. Way back about 1968, 1969, I suddenly realized that nobody did a trick with a credit card. And I thought, how stupid, because a credit card is like a signed card. It's very, very personal. So I sat down, figured one out, you're now going to see it. But for this, we require a credit card. Who has got a credit card? Shrieks of silence. A credit card. You <laughs> are the wealth over here. Fabulous. Uh, you got a credit card, right? Oh, well, this guy. Did you say to your wife or is it a business trip? <laughs> wife. Oof. Oh, it's business trip. Wife or a oh, business right. trip. Give it to her then, will you? That's fine. 
Uh, my wife had a credit card and it got stolen. Here we go. Bothered to report it because the thief was spending so much less than she was. Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> now, when I take this from you, this is plastic surgery. See? We're uh. going to place this underneath, underneath the handkerchief like that. And you are going to hold it up high. And you come around here, like that. Hold up. Always you hold the thing up for a magician with that hand. You never pass this hand across the front, otherwise two of the better appeals in the trick are lost, okay? Now, <laughs> my credit card is in a sealed envelope in a zipped wallet. My goodness. Inside there, right down in here. Car hide wallet, but the car didn't hide well enough, so you know it's a wallet. You know? <laughs> now, this, this is a zip. There's a zip that goes all the way around. And inside, a sealed envelope with Very my clever. credit card. And I don't use it unless it's absolutely essential, because the only way to get it out is to unzip. And I seem to remember saying that under slightly different circumstances. Oh, well. <laughs> you haven't done anything, my dear? Hold the wallet. Now, if anything goes wrong with a credit card, it's between you and the two ladies. I have nothing to do with it. I'm out of it now completely. Right. All we need to know is the name of the kind gentleman who loaned the credit card. Take it out from underneath and read the name, will you, dear? But I should have asked you to do this at the outset. Take it out and read the gentleman's name out loud. What does it say? This is Dr. Billy McComb. That's my credit card. You know him? Oh, thank God. Then you can explain to him how you vanished his credit card. <laughs> Sit down before you do any more damage. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's pretty well the end of that trick. Now, the... <laughs> yeah, I can't leave you standing. Sit down there, because this is a little bit extraordinary. If my credit card... The shock might be too much for you, see. If my <laughs> credit card has turned up there, I'm left thinking, what in the hell have we got here? <laughs> Remember, mine was in the sealed envelope. Let's unzip this right around like that, and we look inside, and we see what we have, because we have... Oh, we got several envelopes. Uh, that's not the one we're looking for. That's not sealed. Uh, that's not... Oh, this is sealed, yeah. Hey, if you hold that up to the light, you'll see from back there there's something inside, right? I'm merely going to start the tear along here. I'm not going to put anything inside or doing anything fiddly. It's sealed with the old family seal ring right there. You take this in your hand. If that is your credit card inside, shout hallelujah in a loud voice, and we'd all sing God Save the Queen and march the hell out of here. <laughs> is that your credit card? Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Wasn't that beautiful? Yeah. And I think it's outstanding. I saw a little something I never saw before, or at least never thought about that way before. That's I right. don't want to say much, but just let's just say the way he worked with, you know, this is a trick, obviously. It's a sealed card and envelope transposition. Um, I, it's funny. I once worked out a similar kind of thing. It was a selection and a credit card and a they pulled it off and it was gone and it's inside the wallet and it just made a lot of sense. But I'll tell you what, I've never seen that sealed wallet envelope done quite that way. And it was so beautiful. A lot of beautiful touches there that you don't normally see when you see that method done. It's really good. And that's a guy that's been doing variations on the card in sealed envelope for 50 years. And so when he decided to add a credit card, we don't know, but we know this, he'd been doing cards in sealed envelopes for quite some time before that, mm -hmm. Steve. No, I, I thought that was great. I thought that you, was just you so are, much fun. You are a sealed envelope man, right? You do a I, good I am. We, we as a, a guilty as charged, I am a build to sealed envelope guy. And are you a Terry Seabrook uh, fan? I, I am a Terry Seabrook. Uh, so then the real question, I'll put you on the spot, because when we talk about the great classics of the English working men's magicians, mm -hmm. if you had to take Seabrook or Macomb, who, who's your I, choice? I mean, it's Seabrook. There's no question about it in my mind. It has book. to be. I mean, it has to mind. be. It has in to my be. mind. Yeah, yeah, in it, my it, mind, it, it is. is. <laughs> this is, this is. I, but this. that in no way diminishes my love for Billy McComb. But in some way, 
this totally gets right back to the Doc, Eric, Ginger, Marianne. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're correct. <laughs> it's an You're esoteric correct. thing that we'll continue yeah. in our after show for the members only. Let me just say, uh, if you're a member and you're hanging out, stick around. We're going to do the after show and we're going to talk a little bit about secrets and such. Uh, if you're joining us today on the big stream, I hope you had a great time. Do us a favor. All we ask in return for this incredible magic wisdom that we are sharing with you uh, and talking about is that you hit the fantabulous follow button and that salacious subscribe button so you can get notified when all the next Ruby stuff goes down. Thank you so much for watching. 